When interpreting chemical formulas, it's important to know what exactly you're dealing with. These values here give you either the ion to ion ratio in a formula unit of a substance, or how many moles of each substance there are in one mole of the substance. Now that sounds confusing, this will straighten it out. In one mole of sodium chloride, there's one mole of sodium ions and one mole of chloride ions for a total of two moles of ions per mole of substance. That's kind of like saying per mole of human beings, there'd be two moles of arms because each person has two arms. One mole of potassium oxide has two moles of potassium and one mole of oxygen for a total of three moles worth of ions. In the compound lithium phosphate, there are three moles of lithium, one mole of phosphorus, and four moles of oxygen for a total of eight moles of atoms in this compound. In copper two sulfate, there's one mole of copper, one mole of sulfur, and four moles of oxygen for a grand total of six moles of atoms. In iron 2 nitrate, there's one mole of iron. This two outside the parentheses distributes to everything inside the parentheses. Therefore, there's two times one, or two moles of nitrogen, two times three, or six moles of oxygen, for a total of nine moles of atoms. In zinc phosphate, there are three zincs, there are two phosphoruses, and there are two times four is eight oxygens, for a total of 13 atoms for formula unit of zinc. Phosphate. Putting a coefficient in front multiplies everything that comes after it. Therefore, there's a grand total of two moles of sodium and two moles of chlorine for a total of four moles of atoms. There are nine lithiums, three phosphoruses, three times four is 12 oxygens for a grand total of 12 plus 12 is 24 moles of particles. Five times three is 15 zincs. 5 times 2 is 10 phosphoruses. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 5 is 40 oxygens. That's a lot of oxygens. See what's going on here? There's 4 times 2, and that's 8 per formula unit. But there's 5 formula units. 5 times 8 would be 40 oxygens for a grand total of 65 particles. Now, there's two kinds of analysis that a chemist can perform. One is to find out what elements are in the substance that they're trying to figure out. That's called qualitative analysis. What elements do we have here? You can use things like spectroscopy to figure that out. Do you remember when we did bright line spectra, the fact that each element has its own bright line spectra? Well, by doing that, you can identify what element you have. That's qualitative analysis. Quantitative analysis asks how much of each element is there in the compound. And it's by using quantitative analysis with qualitative analysis that you can determine what the formula of a substance is. For the remainder of this course, most of the math you're going to be doing revolves around using formula mass, or the mass of one mole of a compound. How much is a mole? Well, one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Okay, if you had this, you'd be a millionaire! Wouldn't that be a nice dream? Anyway, this is the number of atoms it takes for an element to weigh its atomic mass in grams. For example, nitrogen has a mass of about 14 atomic mass units per atom. But if you had that many atoms, then the mass would be 14 grams. So a mole is just the number of atoms you need for that atomic mass to be in grams. We're going to do our formula masses taking the masses on the periodic table to the nearest tenth the nearest tenth. So for some examples, we have N2. Now each nitrogen weighs 14.0, but there's two nitrogens in the formula, which means the total combined formula mass, or gram formula mass, because we're doing this in grams, is 28.0 grams per mole. That means each mole of nitrogen is going to weigh 28.0 grams. Now for water. There are two hydrogens in the water. Each hydrogen has a mass of 1.0. And there's an oxygen. That oxygen weighs 15.9994. Well, to the nearest tenth, that would be 16.0. So when you add the masses up, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 16, 
is 18.0 grams per mole. A very important number that you'll get to use a lot over the course of this year. Calcium hydroxide. There's one calcium. Calcium has a mass of 40.08. Now that rounds to 40.1. Plus, there are two oxygens. Each oxygen is 16.0. There are two hydrogens. Each hydrogen is 1.0. For a total formula mass of 74.1 grams per mole. Again, knowing how to get formula mass is going to be one of the most important things you can do for the remainder of the year, because pretty much all calculations we're going to be doing from here on out involve formula mass in one way or another. Here's our final example. There are two irons. Each iron weighs 55.84. Well, that's 55.8. Plus, there are three carbons. Each carbon has a mass of 12.0. There are three times three is nine oxygens. Each oxygen weighs 16.0. This adds up to 291.6 grams per mole. And that's how you determine the formula mass of a substance. And this is why you needed to learn about what these numbers out here represent so that you can find out how many atoms of a particular element there are in a compound so you can use that to determine the formula mass. More on formula mass later.